Well, if you were growing up in the 1970s, you're definitely going to recognize our next guest. Joining us now via Skype is actress Julie Pikarski. Welcome, Julie. We're glad you're with us. Uh, good morning, Monsignor. <laughs> it's a real treat for us. Now, I think a lot of people will know you from the 1977 New Mickey Mouse Club. I mean, that was that where you actually got your start in acting? I have a feeling you've been acting your whole life. Um, well, I mean, that's kind of my big break, so to speak. But actually, back in St. Louis, I have been doing singing and dancing lessons since I was young. And there's a huge, awesome... Um, outdoor theater. It's the nation's largest. It's called the Muni Opera. And actually, that's where I did a lot of my singing and my dancing. So it was really more stage and live theater. But I did do some industrial things. And then Walt Disney called. <laughs> that's amazing. It's, I mean, it's a great story. I mean, it's wonderful. And the other thing, you know, one of the things I really love about it, what they've been speaking about you a lot around here, is saying that, you know, you're a Catholic woman who has had a tremendous sense of your Catholic faith your whole life, huh? You know, it's it's really interesting because especially as I've gotten older, um, you know, it's amazing what what you assume in life and what's really real. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been having an awesome, great, intimate relationship with my faith and with Jesus my whole life since I was a little girl. I can remember my mom coming into like I think I was taking a bubble bath or something, and she's like, "Who are you talking to?" I said, well, Jesus, of course, that's who I was talking to. So, um, and where I went to grade school. And actually, all my schooling, I really attributed to that. I went to Academy of the Sacred Heart wow. in St. Charles, so the Sacred Heart nuns. And there was a very, very special nun, um, the headmistress, Sister Steffi, who, when I was chosen to go out to um, Hollywood, you know, she said, you know, you've been given great gifts from God, but, you know, just remember, don't forget who you are. And I can't tell you how that really stuck with me. In fact, she gave me a quote, and I use it wherever I go. My kids all know it by heart because I always say it, but it's um, what you are is God's gift to you and what you make of yourself is your gift to God. Wow. That's beautiful. Yep. And that's so true, too, in our lives. I mean, I remember just when they were saying, uh, when Lisa, one of our uh, producers here, told me that you were coming, you know, I naturally just Googled your name because you sounded familiar. But then all of a sudden, all of these pictures came up and I was like, oh, yeah, she was in that. Oh, my Lord, she was in that. Oh, my Lord, she was in that. I mean, give us a little bit of, of a taste of the programs, particularly the sitcoms that we all grew up with that you were on at one point or another. I mean, it's incredible. Oh, well, thank you so much. Like, I was just talking with someone about this, and I, I truly feel like I just really had an amazing, blessed childhood. Um, so I went out to California with Disney, and that was for the, the new Mickey Mouse Club. I have to always say that because... I'm not that old that I was with the Annette group. But I'm also <laughs> no. not old that I was with Christina Aguilera and, you know, Brittany and that whole group either. Um, though some people always ask me, so I take that as a compliment. <laughs> um, but I did um, the Mickey Mouse Club. And then while I was out there, because at the time I didn't have an agent. I mean, I'm talking, I was kind of plucked, you know, out of the, the nationwide talent search. So that I ended up getting an agent. And I did, at that time, guest appearances. I, I did something on, like, Little House on the Prairie. I did, I'm really dating myself now on senior. Um, the show Quincy. Remember Quincy? Oh my lord, it, sure. Love it. <laughs> ah, yeah, I did that. And then one of the ones a lot of people love is um, Three's Company. Sure. I think an, a valley girl. Oh my god, like really, like no way. That's what I put on that with. Um, and that was amazing to work with John Ritter. Talk about a truly gifted guy and, and a great, great soul. So it was great to work with him. And then another, and I went on to do other little guest spots, but I think the other thing I'm known for is a couple of commercials. So remember the Dr. Pepper commercials? <laughs> but David Naughton, I'm a pepper, he's a pepper, yep. you're a pepper. So I did that, and then I became kind of the Taco Bell spokesgirl. Now, I'm embarrassed for, to tell you that's how I know you from Taco Bell. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. You serious? I love it. What can I say? <laughs> And somebody um, whispered in my ear that you actually, you changed life for Taco Bell by that commercial, right? Um, yeah, so I was kind of the spokesperson for about two and a half years. Okay. And then after me came, um, oh my gosh, now I'm, I'm losing. It was, I think the little Chihuahua dog came after me. <laughs> but, um, yes, but I increased their sales. It was PepsiCo that was, um, that's actually the parent company of Taco Bell at the time. And um, I increased their sales by like, 85%, 90%. So I actually have a gold card from Taco Bell. It's a little card, comes in a little case. I open it up. It has my picture on it. And so basically wow. I can eat at Taco Bell for life for oh free. Oh, my Lord. Julie, would you be my sister? <laughs> <laughs> my kids in college. I was like, hey, Mom, come visit. Let's use that Taco Bell card. That's so funny.
And Monsignor, we also can't forget the facts of life because of, um, of obviously that was an, another huge part, a huge stepping stone for me in my career. And that's what I was on it for three seasons, playing the part of Sue Ann. And Sue Ann was kind of the Midwest All-American girl from Kansas City, Kansas. Um, and at that time, I was becoming, I was 15, 16 years old, because I remember I had my car and I was driving on the set. And, you know, with that, there kind of became another huge responsibility because now I was becoming a role model for, you know, young teenage girls and actually for kind of for boys as well. So um, I took that pretty seriously with what my character would portray and um, both on set, on TV, as well as when I was, you know, living my life and I would get recognized. It was really important to me when um, people would recognize me, you know, that I would take the time to talk with them, answer questions. But, um, yeah, so with, with the facts of life, that was kind of a, a, a huge part for me with realizing, how do I want to say that? I don't want to say like the power, but I, I mean, for lack of a better word, the power of what the industry has when you're put in that position. And um, you can't take that lightly. And I'll go back to kind of what my sister Steppy, when I was in grade school, you know, told me was remember when whatever you portray, whoever you are, you're representing that wherever you go. And um, I always took that to heart as well. So uh, as, a, as a young girl, basically you're a young girl when a lot of this is starting, were you able to bring faith to Hollywood? You know, how did, I, I hear so many different stories about diff this with different people I've interviewed. How did you find exercising your faith in the midst of the Hollywood scene, you know? You know, it, it's so hard, Monty, that it literally was just a part of who I was. But, and between the schooling and I have to say my parents and my upbringing, they just always, especially my father, we always said he was the next thing to being a priest, um, such a, just a great, great man, that it was just always important. And it was about, you have gifts, you have a responsibility to who much is given, much is expected. And so when I went out to California, I mean, I was doing my acting, but there was one moment that as I was getting older, there were two different films that came up and I was up for the part and actually got the part. And then I remember my agent, I was like, okay, so like, what's my wardrobe? What do I go in for a wardrobe fitting? And they're like, well, let's check this out. And they're like, okay, well, here it is. And I'm like, well, it says I'm wearing a towel. They're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, well, like what else is my wardrobe? And then as I'm reading through the script, at one point, it was kind of one of these fake spoof horror films. My towel, I dropped my towel. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 we're not, we're not doing this. And he's like, yeah, but this really could help launch your career. And this, you know, this could really be a stepping stone. I'm like, no, if, if my father can't come see it, my, my priest in my parish and I, no, 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 no. So, I mean, I was just very confident and kind of knew who I was and knew who my identity was, you know, in my faith that I had no problem saying no. Good for and you. Well, Good for you. What a blessing. Now, I know eventually um, you, you left acting, you got married, and you had three children, which is, is a wonderful gift. And then you kind of shifted into being this mom to bring up three children, right? Yes. And out of everything I, I've, I've done, that, that truly is. I, I, I've loved being a mom as when they're younger, and I love that this new role I've kind of switched into as the advisor. <laughs> um, which I have to walk that gently, if you know what I'm saying, as they get older. Um, oh, but no, my, my three kiddos, they're amazing. And two of them, Patrick is married. He's a, he's a doctor in residency right now. And what's amazing, he's going to be graduating from residency and he's doing a fellowship. He wants to go more into robotic surgery in his field. And so he matched, he's coming out to California wow. for about a year. So I'm excited about that. And um, he's married to a, my daughter-in-law, who I adore, Shannon. And then they're living in Memphis right now. And then I have my daughter, Jacqueline. And she has been married for about three years to a wonderful man, um, Blake. And they live in actually Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And I always feel like I have to say roll tide when, wow. when I say that. She went down to Alabama for gymnastics and um, her academics and fell in love. And he's a wonderful young man. And then my youngest, Christian, actually well so they all sang and they actually all danced um and my oldest patrick we found out he had this wonderful voice because actually i was cantering at my parish church and i was very hoarse and i couldn't sing the whole way through and he's like i can do it mom wow what and he was about eight years old and he had this beautiful like vienna boys choir voice and now, literally, that's how we found out that he had this voice nothing and that, they also performed for cardinal dolan's mother somebody said in st louis 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I found that video. Um, so yes, it was actually for, I believe it was for Catholic Charities, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. Sure, I think sure. it was. And it was down at um, the Missouri Athletic Club. And they wanted to put together like a 20 minute little show. So the three of them, we kind of worked it out. It was adorable. I thought it was adorable. And um, they performed it. It was back in 2006. I know that because my youngest Christian was going to be playing Oliver in wow. the Muni. And um, they did this the great um, little show. And at one point, it was, um, um, well, at the time, it was. Father Dolan, um, his mom was, it was her big birthday and I don't remember which birthday it was. So my youngest came off the stage and sang to her. It's a song from the musical Mame, You're My Best Girl. Wow. What a so beautiful treat. Her, oh, it was adorable and brought tears to her eyes and, and everybody, they loved it. So that was, that was really special. So he's the one then Christian, my youngest, though they all sang, they all danced and actually, you know, it was, it was, I would say show business does prepare you kind of for life because you have to stand in front of people. You have to speak. So my son at the doctor, when he pre you know, presents um, different research, you know, he's got that covered. My daughter, who's now a physical therapist and got her um, doctorate at Emory, you know, the same thing, working with people. And they all kind of sing when they get a chance to. But my youngest decided to kind of follow in my footsteps. So, um, yeah. So he went on to Yale and got his degree, a uh, double majored and um, using his gift that way. I love it. It's a beautiful story. You know, I, I the other thing I was thinking about going to mass. Like now, is is that has that become even more important to you as as you've gotten older? I would think in the midst of the the coronavirus situation, so many people I speak to, even though maybe they can't physically go to church, it means an awful lot to them to watch it on television or to keep up with what's going on in the life of faith to watch our network. Um, what about you and the ability to go to mass and to be able to worship God? Oh, oh. If, if I can't do that, I mean, for me, Sundays, even when, from my, when my kids were little, I made, I had them dress up. I wanted them to feel like Sunday was a special day. And, um, oh no, if I can't go to mass, it, it it's really hard. So it's kind of different because out in where I am now in California, you know, different counties do different things. But we actually, they do have, um, the parish I attend um, when I can is St. Monica's and they have certain service you can go inside they also have a service outside but one thing that's truly amazing is they have i mean i hate to say it, but that's kind of what it is it's the, the drive up communion yes true sure, sure and um so i think that's probably the biggest thing is still being able to receive communion but i have to tell you monsignor i do think you know when we look back sometimes with i don't want to say the good things but i always believe you know god brings you know goodness out of you know the bad that with the coronavirus i do believe i love it that um I think the Catholic, the Catholic faith, the parishes that we've kind of been updated a little bit, you know, when we've gotten online now and, um, we're, you know, we're getting to reach out to more people. So um, I think that's a huge, a huge benefit in the sense of, you know, those that, you know, can't come out, have been bedridden. They now have a choice to see their parish, you know, online. And um, but yeah, going in person for me, that's the best. And worshiping together and singing together. I think that's that's truly the community, you know what I'm saying, and what um, God and church has really meant it all to be. Boy, that's great, Julie. I tell you, it's so great to meet you and to spend some time with you. You know, we're in the process right now of doing some things, God willing, with the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and trying to work a little closer with them so that we can uh, bring Catholic Faith Network out to you as well. So promise me you'll be my friend, okay? <laughs> and we can continue oh. to do good things together, all right? Oh, I would love to. And that's kind of the reason why I'm back out in California. I truly, over about two years ago, felt a huge calling. I felt this mm -hmm. draw from, from God to say, Julie, you know, get back out there and pursue your acting career. But, you know, he's like, but do it with either faith-based mov movies, the good, wholesome, you know, we need that. Yeah. We need that because we are so going in a different direction in the entertainment industry. And, you know, I'm like, where are the shows that we grew up? I grew up on Highway to Heaven and, you know, Little House on the Prairie. It's like, where are those kind of shows? Yeah. So that's why I'm out there. So, yes, Monsignor, I will definitely be your friend. <laughs> All right, good. I appreciate that. We'll be in touch soon. But thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. And I'll keep you in my prayers, too. Promise. Oh, thank you. Definitely need those. All right. You have a great day, Monsignor. God bless you. We'll see you soon.